OK, we've worked out the equations telling us if we know the position of velocity at the start of a time step, what the position of velocity at the end of the time step will be, making the assumption that the acceleration doesn't change significantly during the time step, which is a pretty good assumption to make if the time step is very short. And we've got an equation for the acceleration. Let's put some numbers in. Uh, let's assume a drag coefficient of a half, put in the density of air, let's assume you've got two square metres of area for a base jumper in a wingsuit and that the base jumper weighs 100 kilograms. Plugging that all in, the acceleration comes out as 0.007 v squared minus 9.8. Now we need to get a computer to calculate this over and over and over again for us. I'm going to show first of all how to do this using Excel and then how to do it using Python. So in this video, let's get, bring Excel up. Any spreadsheet will do. They're all very similar in this respect. So first of all, let's put in a value for our time step. Because we might want to change this. We don't know off the top whether this is going to be small enough to get an accurate value. So let's try it out and see. And then we'll have a column of the times, column of the positions, column of the velocities, column of the accelerations, and we'll have the delta x's and the delta v's. Now we need to know the starting conditions. For any of these equations you need to know at some point, it's called the boundary condition, the velocity, acceleration, and position, and time. So let's assume we start at time, time zero. Why not? And how tall should we make our building? Let's assume we're starting 100 meters up. That's a decent sized skyscraper. And we'll assume that the base jumper simply steps off the top rather than diving downwards or diving upwards. So the velocity is going to be zero at the beginning. Now we've worked out our equation for the acceleration over here. So let's put that in. So the acceleration equals sine to tell Excel this is an equation equals 0.007 times velocity squared, so we'll times by C4 and times by the same square again, and minus 9.8. Okay, now we need to work out the change in position over this time step. And once again, we've got the equation for that. It's equal to the starting velocity delta t plus half a t squared. So let's put that in here. So it's going to be equal to that times the time step plus half times the acceleration times the time step squared. And then we're going to need to put in the delta v, the change in velocity, and that, if you remember, is just the acceleration times the time step. So that's just equals acceleration times time step. Now there's a little bit of black magic we need here, Excel black magic. What we're going to do is we're going to drag down and apply this equation to all the column down here, but, but it's always got to point to this time step over there. And the way you do that in Excel is you put a little dollar sign in front of the B and the 1. And you do the same thing over here. And that means that no matter where we copy the cell to, it'll always refer back to the cell over here. The things that don't have a dollar in front will refer to the same one in the same line. But the one that do it does have dollar will always refer to here, and that's what we want. Makes no difference for the moment, but it will make a difference as we drag down. OK, so now we need to set up for the second row. So the time at the second row is going to be equal to the time in the first step plus the time step. And once again, we need dollars in there, so it also refers to that cell. Which is what you expect. Time has gone up to the next step by 0.1. The new position is going to be equal to the old position plus delta x, the change in position. The new velocity is going to be equal to the old velocity plus delta v. And the acceleration 
it's going to be this it just depends on the velocity so it's going to be the same equation here so if we drag down it will apply the same equation similarly for the delta x's and delta v's we can just drag down to apply the same equation here so for example if you look at this equation you can see oh we made a mistake there should be a dollar in front of the b's it should be dollar b dollar one so we're copying the wrong equation down that's better it's now referring to the cell regardless whereas previously it had been dragged down by one i've got the dollars correct over here but i forgot to do them at the beginning so when you click on this you can see it's calculating it based on this on this cell and that cell up there which is what you want and same for here it's based on this cell and that cell which again is what you want okay so now we are ready for our big step what we can do is drag down on this which will give us a whole bunch of new cells all of which using the same formulae oh, let's see 106 is probably enough more than enough it's gone to a negative fallen well through the ground here so you might want to stop after 55 but let's leave it for the moment let's assume there's a big hole that someone could fall into so what we've now got is a whole column of all the positions so for each one let's say we take this position here we can see it's equal to the position the time step before plus the delta x and if we look at the delta x over here we see that's given by this equation plus going back to the time step right that's our answer but let's see what it actually looks like so let's plot i don't know let's plot time against velocity we tried to calculate what this would look like earlier on let's see if we were right so there's the time selected to select the velocities i hold down the control key and select this column okay and let's plot the graph so we're going to insert recommended chart will probably do the trick that looks okay so here we've got velocity against time so you can see it starts off velocity becoming more and more negative falling faster and faster but then it starts plateauing out out of in this case about uh, minus 37 meters per second so this is about what we expect it starts falling that's probably slope there is going to be g but then comes to near terminal velocity but what you can see is even by the time you fall in this case from 100 meters to minus 100 they haven't quite reached terminal velocity it's getting pretty close but it's still slanting downwards gradually okay let's try plotting height versus time so we'll select this column Okay, so let's insert, recommend a chart. Okay, so position versus time. And again, starting at 100 meters, it looks like it hit the ground at about five seconds. At five seconds, the velocity would be about uh, 33 meters per second, which is about 100 kilometers per hour. So I think it'd be worth deploying the parachute before you get to that point. And we can also plot acceleration. So let's select this column again. Hold down the control key and select the acceleration column. Insert, recommend a chart. Hmm, very pretty. So we've got the acceleration starting off at G and starts increasing and then plateaus out at about zero. So we've done it. We've answered the problem. This all looks pretty plausible. 